Magandang araw, April and Marcos po, ang inyong pretty ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapaghusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also our fresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills and technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryong ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our Dev Ed EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, Dev Ed Tayo and Dev Ed Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Magandang araw! Ako po si Sir Ariel, ang Alts Lover ng EdTech Unit. Narito po ako para sa isang napakagandang balida at upang magpaalala na ang kinabukasan ay mas gaganda at uulad kung ang lahat ay patuloy na mag-aaral. Sa edukasyon sa ating bansa, tiyak na walang maiiwanan sa pag-abot ng mga pangarap. Kaya naman ang Department of Education ICTS Educational Technology Unit at Alternative Learning System Task Force ay nagtutulungan sa pagkakaroon ng ALS Tech Empowerment Program upang maihatid ang excellent quality education sa ating mga ALS learner and teachers. To easily deliver the lessons from the modules and other references, we will provide tablet PC as part of the DepEd Computerization Program to all ALS teachers and orientation on the use of these packages. To deepen the pedagogical use of information and communications and technology in delivering instructions, there are training workshops on the use and curation of Open Educational Resources or OER, Google and Microsoft Productivity Tools, creation of video lessons using PowerPoint presentations and KineMaster, and on ebook or e-magazine development. To create an avenue for remedial lessons that is open to all learners, teachers, and parents, we will have the Itulai free online tutorial and mobile Itulai 
where we will visit remote schools to feature the best practices of our ALS teachers and learners. Sa mga out of school youth and adult, laging tatandaan na may pag-asa upang makapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral. May ALS para sa inyo. Ang edukasyon ay para sa lahat. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad. All right. So, good afternoon sa ating mga senior high school learners, especially sa ating mga grade 11 and grade 12 students na nag-take na ngayon ng subject natin, which is a core subject entitled Earth and Life Science. My name is Tutor Tony from Nova Liches High School, and I will be your tutor for this session. So, we are now actually on week number five. So, marami-rami na rin tayo na aral. Marami-rami na tayo na itulay ng mga scientific concepts. So, for this week, Medyo loaded, no? Meron tayong tatlong topics na kailangang aralin. First one would be about plate tectonics. The next one is about formation of rock layers. And finally, malalaman natin ang difference at saka paano ba ginagamit ng mga geologists ang relative at saka absolute dating para malaman ang age ng mga rocks. So once again, sa ating mga bagong viewers, ayan, so hello po sa inyo. Good afternoon. From Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. My name is Tutor Tony, and I will guide you para po sa inyong pag-aaral ng Earth and Life Science. So as mentioned kanina sa ating uh, teaser ng Itulay, so we are using the Pivot module from uh, Calabarzon, Region 4A. So for this specific session, we will be using the following modules. Module number 10, module number 11, and module number 12. So I hope uh, okay po kayo lahat kung nasan man po kayo. Dito po sa Metro Manila, pabago-bago ang weather. Kanina maulan, tapos ngayon medyo mainit-init na naman, kaya <laughs> nagkakasakit ang mga tao. <laughs> so ingat-ingat po. So make sure that you are uh, uh, taking your vitamins, your eating, uh, the healthy foods. Ayan. So are you ready guys? So you need your pen and paper? kung may mga mahilig kayo mag-notes, and you also have your your modules, and lagi kong sinasabi sa mga sessions po natin, so presence of your mind, and of course, presence of the heart. So hindi lang tayo sa science, hindi lang natin inaaral ng mga concepts. So we try to apply and integrate the scientific concepts sa ating mga buhay. And then finally, so I'm requesting everyone who is watching right now, team live gaman or team replay, so interact with me, no? So comment na kayo sa ating comment section, sa ating mga questions, Questions later on sa mga activities natin. And then you can also comment, mga konting pa-shoutout or pagbatik. So make sure lang na nakalagay ang inyong mga name ng school at saka yung location ninyo. Alright? So yun yung mga requirements ni Sidney Sir Tony. Ayan, and recently, no, last April 22, ayan, so last Thursday, we celebrated Earth Day. So happy Earth Day, belated Earth Day sa inyong lahat. So I hope... Uh, na celebrate nga ito na maayos and hopefully sana nga no ang uh, advocacy natin is let's make uh, every day an earth day so let's make things na or do things na nakakabuti sa ating nag-iisang planetang earth all right so let's have a quick review first ayan so good afternoon mo uh, check lang natin ang ating comment section all right so good afternoon sa ating mga viewers ayan so last session, we discussed about metamorphism and we actually named or termed the rocks, the metamorphic rocks as change rocks. So it happens or metamorphism happens if there is a change that takes place within the body of a rock. So physical man yan or chemical. And then we also take a look at the scheme na ginagamit geologists para ma-identify nila easily and accurately ang mga metamorphic rocks or factors para mag-undergo ng metamorphism ng isang rock. So remem remember, ha, ang metamorphic rock ay galing sa isang igneous, sedimentary, or isa, isa pang existing na metamorphic rock. So because of heat, pressure, at saka chemically active fluids like the water na nagkocontain ng mga ions, metamorphism takes place. Yan. We also discuss foliated and non-foliated rocks. I introduced to you the terms lineation or foliation, diba? So, nagkakaroon ng mga layers or bonds. 
or mga foliation sa tinatawag dahil diyan sa recrystallization of minerals. So nagcrystallize na sila before during or nung ano pa lang sila, igneo, sedimentary or metamorphic. So nagcrystallize para mag makabuo ng panibagong metamorphic na rock. We also discussed the types of igneous rocks, so extrusive rocks at saka intrusive. So remember, extrusive is form on the surface, while intrusive rocks are those form underground. So from magma and from, from lava. And ang highlight ng ating session last time about igneous rocks is the types of igneous rocks based on their composition. So inintroduce ko sa inyo yung apat na terms no, na ginagamit ng mga geologists at saka petrologists called, uh, ayan, so felsic, intermediate, mafic at saka ultramafic. So nagbabari lang naman yan sa kanilang ang pinaka-basis ng or pinaka-indicator ng mga experts dyan, ng mga rock experts is yung presence ng silicon oxide. So the more na meron siyang silicon oxide na content, mas magiging lighter ang kanyang appearance. And at the same time, the less naman magiging darker. So tulad ng nakikita ninyo sa ating presentation. Ayan. So we discuss about metamorphism at saka the types of rock based on their composition. So for this session, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, uh, medyo tatlo yung <laughs> targets natin. So let's get started. First is, we have to explain how the movement of plates leads to the formation of folds and faults. Mag-review lang tayo ng konting concept natin about plate tectonics. Next one would be, we'll be discussing about how layers of rocks or called the stratified rocks are formed. So, paano ba nabubuo yan? So, recall lang na, di ba? Sedimentary rocks yan are responsible for that. And then finally, we will be describing the different methods to determine the age of the, uh, the, age of the stratified rocks. So, nabanggit ko na kanina, relative at saka absolute dating. So, let's get started. First topic natin would be the movements of plates and formation of uh, formations of folds and faults. As you can see, sa ating uh, diagram, ayan. So, I think grade 10 science yung tuhuling inara, no? First quarter ng science then, because I used to teach science then, then. So, the earth can be considered as a large jigsaw puzzle. And as you can see, it is divided into different plates. Okay, so please take note, class, no, na ang mga plates ay iba sa continents. Okay? Ayan, so we even have our very own plate. Ayan, so we have the Philippine plate right here, Pacific plates, and all the other major plates sa ating planet. Ayan, so principles of plate tectonics. So discuss na natin. The Earth's outermost rigid layer or the lithosphere is broken into discrete plates, each moving more or less as a unit. So yung movement na yan, hindi naman totally gumagalaw, hindi naman natin totally nakaramdaman. Yes, it's very, very, very slow. Okay? And at ang driving force dyan ay ang mantle convection, which we already discussed sa mga previous sessions natin. And ang alam naman natin, of course, that the lithospheric plates ay nasa ibabaw yan ng ating asthenosphere. Next concept is, ayan, yung mga movement or yung motion, mamaya malalaman natin kung mga different types of motion ng mga plates, they have very distinct features and at the same time, they form different geologic features like volcanoes, mountains, and many other geological uh, landforms. And of course, tulad na na-mention ko kanina, a plate is not the same as a continent. Okay? So meron tayong mga plates na uh, kinikari niya or daladala niya one or two continents, di ba? Yeah. So let's have a quick review. Ayan. So good afternoon sa ating mga viewers. Annalyn, Kay, Marvin, Francis, Maribel, Jonah, Krisa, and Rosemary. Ayan. So sige, uh, we, I have here the three types of plate boundaries. Can you still remember? Ayan. Yung mga tawag natin dyan. Kapag nag-collide uh, sila or nag they, are, they are being pulled apart or pa-slide yung kanilang uh, movements. Can you still recall? So first picture natin. So that is your divergent plate boundary. Ayan. So pag divergent, naghihwalay. The, 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 the plates are moving uh, away from each other. How about the second picture? Ayan. As you can see, nagbabanggaan. Ayan. Naform yung mga mountain ranges. Pwedeng isa ay nagmagsabda or papailalim siya. The other one will remain on its position. What do you call this one? This one is called your convergent plate boundary. So divergent palayo, convergent magkokolide or magbabanggaan. And then finally, 
Ayan. So, uh, opposite direction naman, no? Ang kanilang movement. Letter T, can you still remember? So, uh, reminder lang, no? So, you can uh, have your comments, your answers at in comment box. Wag kong mahihiya. <laughs> Walang tama or maling sagot. So, we are all learning together. And, yan. So, ang ating pangatlong type ng plate boundary is called the transform plate boundary. Again, so, divergent, convergent, and transform. So, I've mentioned, no? Meron silang napoform na mga... Uh, different geological features except to transform. So, wala, yan, wala siyang na-form na geologic feature. So, isa-isa natin. Sige, uh, let's have a quick recall lang. Ayan. So, if you will notice, meron tayong term dito na, na, na constructive at saka destructive. So, yung divergent kasi constructive because uh, it tends to form oceanic, uh, the oceanic plate. Opposite sa convergent na dinedestroy naman yung oceanic dito sphere. So, it's very important na nag interact or nag interplay yung mga gantong processes sa Earth kasi it's, it's a cycle. So, kung wala, kung puro convergent lang yung paggalaw, wala na. So, wala na mapoform na bagong uh, oceanic plates and the Earth will be totally different. Okay? Volcanic, in terms of volcanism or volcanic activity, divergent at saka convergent lang. Wala si transform. And let's know more about these plate boundaries one by one. So, make sure lang na i-note nyo yung mga types ng plates na nagbabanggaan or naglalayo. Alright? So, first geologic feature that we have is what we call the folded mountains. So, sa presentation ni Sir, meron tayo, take note natin na, meron tayong nakalagay kung anong type ng plate boundary. Inuna ko yung mga convergent, tapos followed by divergent and then transform. So, nakalagay yung type ng plate boundary at saka anong klaseng type ng plates ang nag interact So, pwedeng continental yan at saka oceanic plate. Alright, let's have the first one. In our first situation or interaction right here, so nagbabanggaan, kasi nga convergent, ang dalawang continental plate. And, it's, and it forms folded mountains or mountain ranges. Ayan. So since pareso na ng density, so walang, walang isa na papailalim totally. All right? So wala silang choice kundi mag-form mag ng pataas na structures or landforms called the mountain ranges. Yan ang reason kung bakit na-form ang ating mga Himalayas or the Himalayan mountain range. So, dyan makikita ang highest mountain or highest peak sa Earth, which is the Mount Everest, at in all the other ng, uh, kasunod na ranks. And of course, sa Philippines, meron tayo syempre, hindi tayo panghuli. We have the Sierra Madre mountain range, equally beautiful sa Himalayas. Iba nga lang yung structure kasi we are located in a tropical country. Ayan. So, Himalayas, a trivia lang, no? So, yung Himalayan, Himalayan mountain range ay na-form dahil sa pagbangga ng India, ng yung plate ng India, or yung hiwalay kasi yung India before sa Asia. So, from south, kumanga siya sa Asia, and then uh, after the collision, na-form yung mga, ayan, nagtataas ang mga Himalayan mountain ranges. Ayan, including Mount Everest. All right. Next. So, we're done with the folded mountains. The next geologic feature is what we call the deep Ocean Trench. As the name suggests, it's deep. Malalim. Okay? So, yung trench kasi, when we say trench, that is the deepest deepest parts of the ocean. Alright? Ayan. So, meron tayong pangatlo. We are on the top three, the Philippine deep, di ba? Alright. So, we have deep ocean trench. Uh, ang pwedeng magbanggaan dito or mag-converge is one oceanic plate at isang continental or isang oceanic plate. Right? So, yun. as you can see on the diagram, the more dense oceanic plate, mas mabigat siya, subducts under the lens dense uh, pwedeng uh, continental plate or oceanic plate. Kaya nga na-perform natin at the middle, ayan, sa kanilang interaction, we have the trench. And speaking of trench, just recently, ayan, just recently, uh, Dr. Dio or Deo Florence L. Onda, uh, microbial oceanographer of the Marine Science Institute of the University of the Philippines, be, uh, made history for being the first Filipino and one of the first humans to descend sa tinatawag natin na M. Den Deep. Ayan. So, part siya ng ating Philippine Deep, the third deepest spot sa Earth. Ayan. So, that is Dr. Onda, san tunay na Pinoy Pride. That is trench. Next uh, interaction, so pag nag-interact naman or nag-converge ang isang oceanic plate, 
and a, na, uh, and a continental plate, so oceanic versus continental plate, volcanoes can be formed. So paano yun, sir? Paano nakaform yung volcanoes? So because we call our topic about magmatism, di ba? So kapag nagsabdak, magme-melt yung particular uh, portion na nagsabdak, and then, of course, magmatism will happen and will find its way para makahanap yan ng uh, lugar sa surface ng Earth. That's how volcanoes are formed. So it happens uh, thousands or millions of years hanggang ma-form ang different classes natin ng volcano. Kasi meron tayo iba't ibang klase ng volcano. Eh. Pero ang alam natin na common na volcano na nakita natin is yung pinaka parang triangular yung uh, structure. Alright? So volcanoes are formed oceanic at saka isang continental plate na nag-converge. Alright? And then finally for uh, another convergent interaction between dalawang oceanic plate. Okay, so may tinatawag tayo naman na oce oceanic, na volcanic island arcs. So para siyang chain lang ng volcanoes, ayan, as you can see in our diagram. Alright, ayan, okay. So meron tayong major volcano and because of the interaction pa na dalawang oceanic plate, volcanic island arcs may also be formed. So this happens repeatedly, building and building until the volcano breaks the surface of the Water. So iba to sa mga ano ah, sa mga underwater volcanoes. Ito naman talaga nag appear talaga siya sa mga bodies of water. Makikita talaga natin siya. So again, those are folded mountains, deep ocean trench, volcanic island arcs at saka volcanoes na nakaform kapag uh, nag-interact ang mga uh, interact ang mga plates via convergent plate boundaries. Let's proceed with divergent. So we have for divergent kapag nag-collide. Ito divergent, may ano na, no? Ay, divergent, nag-collide. nag na sila, no? So we have two continental plates. nag -ihiwalay. Hindi naman sila totally naggalit. <laughs> Kailangan lang nilang mag for a reason. <laughs> Ayan. So reef valley is one of the structures or geological features na pwedeng ma-form. Ayan. So reef valley. So meron ba kayong alam na common or pinaka- Example natin, ng Rift Valley. Ayan, so across is stretched wider, the valley drops deeper. So pag sinabi kasi pala natin valley, no, valley is a place sa gitna ng dalawang volcanoes or mountains. So ayan, so pwede siyang malagyan ng water through time or pwede talaga siyang totally, ano lang siya, dry land lang siya. One of the best examples, ayan, if you study geology, ang minamention palagi is the East African Rift Valley. Yeah. So, ang ganda, di ba? So, sobrang Instagrammable. And as you can see, may mga layers of rocks. Yeah. East African Rift Valley, of course, found in the eastern part of Africa. And the next one for divergent naman, so as you can see, ayan, may tinatawag naman tayo na mid-ocean ridges. So, middle ocean. Ridges is parang mga spaces or gaps in between. Ayan, ridges, ridge na chichiria, di ba? May mga ridges yun. Nangyayari naman to kapag nag-diverge ang dalawang oceanic plates. Ito na yung sinasabi ni Sir kanina na the reason or one of the reasons kung paano nakaform ang ating mga oceanic, uh, lithosphere, uh, oceanic lithosphere, part ng uh, lithosphere natin, All right, the ocean floors. And scientists or experts term uh, uses the term sea floor spreading. Okay, so sea floor spreading happens at this mid-ocean ridges. Ayan. So, or review lang natin, no? So, for divergent, we have Rift Valley. And we have the Mid-Ocean Ridges. So, nag for divergent. Alright? And finally, the transform or the other reference kasi, they use the term strike, slip, fault, boundary. Okay? Ang pinaka-common dyan is, I'm sure you have already watched the movie, The San Andreas. So, pinifeature doon yung San Andreas Fault sa California. So, ganito yung nangyayari dyan. So, at a uh, best example of the transform plate boundary. Ayan, the San Andreas Fault is the sliding boundary between the Pacific Plate. So, isa Pacific Plate siya nangyayari at saka sa North American Plate. So, part nun yun nga yun sa California. It slices California into two from the, ang tawag ay Cape Mendocino to the Mexican border. So, tap, sa tababa kasi nila is yung mga Latin Americans na, so including the Mexican Peninsula, right? So that was the the San Andreas Fault. All right, let's try to answer some of this, but before that, konting ano lang tayo, shout out lang tayo. 
Ayan, so oh, may grade 7 tayo from PNHS, Ryuji Reyes, hello. Sir William Takdoro, Carmela Shane Colinares from Camarine, Caloacan City. Ayan, so kapitbahay ko lang, taga-Caloacan. Mary Elvi Ceres, Ceras and Limenhe. Oh, Koreano, ah, Limenhe. Alright, let's try to answer this. Uh, first, this phenomenon is created during transformation of plates movement. So, meron tayong clue word for that. And it's a kinematic phenomenon caused by the relative density of oceanic lithosphere and relative weakness of the asthenosphere. That is what we call the transform fault. Second one is, this plates movement creates mountain and volcanic arc. Mariana's Trench, yung pinaka deepest, uh, deepest part of the Earth, yung Mariana's Trench, also created by this movement. Ano kaya yun? Yung trench ay nabubuo kapag, ayun, converging or convergent plate boundaries. The next one is, the movement of this plate is towards the opposite direction or moving away from each other. Moving away, that is what we call divergent. The fourth one is, the process of rising of hot, dense liquid materials and creates new sea floor. Ayan. So, nag naipon yung mga magma, tumigas yan, mag-solidify, it will form your sea floor or the ocean floor. Anong process na yun ay tinatawag natin? Sea floor spreading. And, of course, finally, a theory that supports the continental, ayun, may correction lang dyan, ha? that supports the continental drift theory and the sea floor spreading is, of course, the plate tectonics. So, we're done with the first target. Let's have the next one. The second objective natin would we'll be talking about formation of rock layers. So ito, I chose this uh, diagram. So sa Pilipinas kasi ito. So it's called the Anima Sola Rock Formation in Masbate. Ayan, as you can see, ang ganda niya, ang ganda. Sobrang, would you imagine kung paano yan form? And can you see the different layers? Ayan, so related kasi yan sa ating uh, pag-uusapan. So this, the rocks are being studied by geologists because they contain clues of what the earth had been in the past. So speaking of fossils, mga rocks, sila yung mga clues natin in the past. And it all started, isa sa mga pioneer ng pag-aaral na yun is a, a Scottish geologist, chemist, and naturalist that goes by the name of James Hutton. So uh, he concluded that there are forces that changes the landscape of the earth in the past. So may result, may driving force kung bakit nagbago yung uh, surface or yung form ng earth, yung landscape ng earth. And he called that the principle of uniformitarianism. Again, principle of uniformitarianism. So it refers to the different geological processes na, na, na discussed na natin before like volcanism, erosion, at saka weathering. So ito naman, are you familiar with this? Ayan, good, uh, good afternoon. Ayan. And sa sa mga mentors ko, hello po ma'am, Melissa Valdos, hello po ma'am, kamustang po? So, we have here the Grand Canyons uh, sa North America. So, the layers of the rocks are like the pages in our history books. Why? Because na, they give clue or they give, give us clue kung ano nangyari sa the past. They even tell us kung ilang taon na ang Earth. Ayan, so how are rock layers formed? So, ayan, so yung layers kasi na yan, so... Uh, uh, it's commonly associated with the sedimentary rocks, if you would remember, diba? So, for this session, we will be using two terms called the stratigraphy at saka stratification. So, let's find the difference. Pag sinabi natin stratigraphy, so, branch siya ng geology kung saan pinag-aaralan ang mga rock layers. So, from the word strata. So, pag sinabi natin strata or stratum in singular, stratum or strata refers to layers. Okay, it will give you clues to the location of the ancient seas, mountains, plateaus, and plains. Kasi kung saan nakaform yung mga ganyang structure, kasi ang sedimentary rock before, nakaform lang naman talaga yan, primarily sa ilalim ng daga. So, before... Yung lugar na yan, kapag nakakita ka ng sedimentary rock or may mga rock layers pertaining primarily sa mga sediments before and during the ancient times, meron malamang sa malamang talaga. Water ang nandyan. Okay? The next word is stratification. It is also known as bedding. And it is, uh, yun nga, the layering of the rocks. That happens, uh, so hindi lang siya sa sedimentary rocks. So nangyayari din siya sa volcanic igneous rocks. Ayan, it is expressed by rock layers or units of a general tabular or lenticular form that differ in 
rock type. So, tandaan po ah, stratigraphy and stratification. And kanina, kung si Hotton, ang inintroduce ko sa inyo. So, we have another scientist as early as the mid-1600s, isang taga-Denmark, a Danish scientist named Nicholas Tenno. Ayan. So, he introduced the the he pioneered the study of uh, the principles so later on it was developed by geologists so ang tinatawag natin dyan ay stratigraphic laws or in other reference the stenus laws Stratigra <laughs> stratigraphic laws are the basic principles that all geologists use so may kumbaga parang ito yung bible ng mga geologists para ma-identify nila or ma-decipher nila ang mga relationship ng mga rock layers so what those layers tell about our the past? Ayan. So it was Nicholas Steno, the strati stratigraphic laws. Ayan, natatang twister na ako. <laughs> Alright, so first, so we have actually around six stratigraphic laws. But for the purpose of, ano, so limited time constraint kasi tayo. So we'll be discussing the three major laws. The law, first is the law of superposition. Superpose, so nagpapatong patong lang. The largest and the heaviest rock layer that settled first at the bottom is the oldest rock layer. The lightest and the smallest that settled last is the youngest rock layer. Of course, na unang ma form yung nasa bottom. Minag settle. Alright. Para daw yan, pwede siyang i-compare sa labahin natin sa bahay. Ayan, di ba? So, yun ang uh, soiled na clothes natin or maduming clothes. And then later on, nagpa-pile up na yan. Kapag nakita nila nanay nyo, ayan, lagot na kayo. <laughs> Pero sa so, so, oldest, yung nasa base, until sa pinaka, uh, yung lightest or the smallest, it would be the youngest rock layer. Next uh, law would be the law of cross-cutting relationship. Wow, relationship. Cross-cutting. So, bakit may cross-cutting? Kasi may fault or may dike na tinatawag na nagka-cut through another rock. So, pwedeng may fault because of an earthquake or a movement or pwedeng nag-intrude yung magma dyan. So, sa ating diagram, we have a number four. Ayan. Ito siya. Ayan. Or number, num coded naman siya. One, two, three, four, five. So, would, number one would be the oldest followed by two, three, and then four. Kasi hindi naman niya nasama yung pinakalas na layer. Five would be the youngest. So when magma intrudes the rock, that fault or magma is younger than the rock. So kanina, law of superposition, law of cross-cutting. Okay? Next is the law of inclusion. So pag sinabi inclusion, include, kasama. Okay, in this diagram, we have rock A at saka rock B. So sa tingin ninyo, ano kaya dyan ang, ang tawag dito? Uh, younger or older rock? Ayan. So, sino kaya nauna na for? Rock A or si Rock B? So, syempre, si Rock A. Kasi yung Rock B, meron na siyang inclusions, di ba? So, bago ma-form yung Rock B, ayan. So, nagkaroon ng fragments because of weathering at saka erosion, napunta yung mga rocks na dyan. Alright? So, one example, ayan, ito. So, we have here on the screen. Ayan. So, intrusion na yan is older compared sa ating na buong rock na ito. So, that is what the law of inclusions tell us. Alright? So, law of superposition, law of cross-cutting, and the law of inclusions. Yeah, Miss Magot, thank you for answering. Miss Rosario, ayan. We also have viewers from Division of Sarangan. Ayan, mga taga Mindanao, very active. Thank you so much po. Hello, Elijah. Uh, Angel Shane David. Naku, grade 7. Mukhang gusto na mag-advance ng senior high school, ah. <laughs> Alright, so let's answer this quick uh, activity. Found on module 11, page 10 of the workbook or the worksheet natin. So, analyze lang natin. No? So, focus lang kayo dun sa diagram. So, it's labeled A to F. Ayan. So, make sure lang na tingnan nyo na mabuti yung layer natin. So, hiniwalay ko na yung bawat question. Kasi kapag pinos ko lang yung nasa module dyan, mahirapan tayo lalo. So, and enlarge ko na lang yung picture at separate ko yung mga questions. So, we can answer better. Alright, question number one. So, based on sa inaral natin ng mga laws ng stratification, so in what layer was the first rock form? Sino ang una na form dyan? So, layer A to F. Okay, of course. Ayan. So, don't be, ano, full da. So, may mga letters, hindi sila ah, naka-arrange o naka-locate sila on a particular location. Ayan. Naka-identify sila on a particular level. So, uh, layer B is the first rock or 
bedrock na na-form. How about this? This. What letter is the... Ayan, thank you. May mga sumasagot. Ayan, tama po si Ms. Rosario. Number two, what letter is the second layer of the rock? Second layer natin, of course, is your layer letter A. Yeah, so B and then followed by A. Third, what happens in the rock represented by letter D? Yeah, so letter D, nasa na letter D? Ayan, so may cross-cutting, may fault, or may slab dyan. Okay, so you have two choices. Is it cutting or insertion? Ayan, so wala naman pinakitang magma. So that is cutting. Number four, what three layers was cut by letter D? Okay, so ano yung mga tatlong layers na yun na kinat ng letter D? Ano yung mga nasakop niya or na-include niya dun sa cutting? So we have, of course, uh, letter layer C. Ayan, we have also layer A and layer B. Ayan, sakto. C, A, B or A, B, C will do. Fifth question. And good afternoon, Miss Amy Lasconia Wells and Elijah Rock A. All right, you're correct. Number five, what takes place in letter F? Ito yung F, no? Is it a fold, fold or a fold? Obviously, it is a, a fault. All right. It's not a saying fault. It is a, a fracture or a break. Right? Let's, say, let's answer item six to ten. Question number six. Ano kaya environmental factor ang nangyari dun sa layer E? Ayan, yung pinaka-top layer. Is it erosion or volcanic eruption? So the diagram will tell us that it will it is ayan, erosion. So nag-erode lang yung mga particles or sediments. Question number seven, based dun sa laws na inaral natin kanina, which rock layer is the oldest? So sa oldest, nasa pinaka-baba. And that is your letter or layer B. Yung kanina, di ba? Siya yung unang na-form. Question number eight, which rock layer is the youngest this time? So youngest would be on the top, all right? And that is layer letter E, all right? So thank you so much, Sumasagot. UG, you're correct. Daniel, Rosario, very active. You're also correct. Number nine, which layer describes the law of horizontal continuity? So ito hindi ko tiniscuss kanina, no? So when we say horizontal continuity, hindi na didisturb ang particular layer. Okay? On this particular layer, except dun sa topmost layer, ano dyan ang hindi na disturb So, hindi na disturb kasi totally okay pa yung layer niya. Most of it. It was, or it is, ayan, letter C or layer C. Ayan. Lay, law of horizontal discontin uh, dis horizontal continuity. Ayan. <laughs> Natakong test ako. Ano ba? <laughs> Number 10. Another law, which layer shows an angular unconformity? So, angular, so na tilt siya, unconformity, ibig sabihin na disturb siya ng another layer on top. Another layer on top. Ano kaya yon? So, hindi si C, syempre. Right? Hindi din sa D kasi siya yung cutting. So, it is A ba or B? Alright. So, actually, it was letter B kasi siya yung nasa ilalim ng layer A. Alright, so good job sa ating mga sumagot. Thank you so much. Sa ating mga viewers, we are our week 5 of uh, Senior High School Earth and Life Science. And finally, we have the last uh, topic. Ayan, extend lang siguro tayo ng konti. <laughs> last topic naman na. So we have uh, geologists use a certain kind of method called the uh, relative at saka absolute dating para ma-date or ma-age, ma-identify nila yung age ng rocks. So technically, they are, they are two different techniques or procedures. So based on ating diagram right here, ayan. So pag sinabi kasi nating relative dating, it's more of descriptive lang. So we tell which one is older, which one is younger. Tulad ng ginawa ninyo kanina dun sa activity. But when we say absolute dating, so merong mas complicated na, na, complicated na process na ginagawa ang mga geologists para ma-identify exactly kung anong age na ng particular rock sample or mineral sample or meron kasi minsan, di ba, may mga fossils na napupunta dyan, especially sa mga sedimentary rock formations natin. Alright? So that is relative tsaka numerical dating or absolute dating. Discuss natin in uh, details sa relative dating. So yung ginawa natin kanina, no, can only determine if a rock layer is young or bold, uh, old 
but it doesn't state the exact age of that particular layer. All right? So ito yung ginawa natin kanina. That's what we call relative dating. But absolute dating naman is more accurate. So it allows the determination of the exact numerical age of rocks and fossils. Sir, bakit pinag-aaralan ba or bakit importante yung pag-aaralan yan? Kasi because uh, if we don't uh, study this one, we will not have the knowledge or yung mga inaaral natin di ba, about fossils, kung ilang taon na yung earth. Diba? So, ilang taon na yung particular rock na nag exist Ayan. So, very important yan up until now. Kasi we, we are still uh, looking for clues in the past. Mga, may nakuhukay pa tayo ng mga fossils, ng mga plants, or ng mga animals, or ng mga microorganisms. And absolute dating is not only used to date rocks. It's also used to date or to a para ma-identify yung mga age ng mga fossils. Okay? So, kumbaga, continuous or progressive process ito. Sa, sa field ng geology. So, ang absolute dating, tandaan class, ay also called numerical dating because we are using numbers, of course, and it's also called radiometric dating. So, from the word radioactivity. Okay? So, sa absolute dating, may ginagamit na terms ang mga geologists natin. We also discussed this sa ating previous na, ano, na discussion about radiogenic heat, no? So, may natawag tayo na radioactivity, the spontaneous emission of radiation in the form of particles or high-energy photons. Yan ang naging clue or naging basis ng mga geologists para ma-perform ang absolute dating. And they take note of what we call the half-life. Ang half-life ay ang time para mag-decompose ang isang particular uh, parent isotope into half. Okay, radioactivity, isa pa yun. Uh, radioactivity is not affected by any geologic process. So, ma-erode ma, ma yan, ma-weathered. Yung minerals or yung components noon ay ganun pa rin. It will still undergo uh, a particular type of radioactivity. The longer the rock exists, the more daughter isotopes accumulate. To give you an idea, ito yung mga commonly used na isotopes for absolute dating. So, commonly yan, carbon-14, kasi carbon is the primary element na nagko-compose sa mga living things. Kasama tayo dyan, syempre. We also have potassium-40 na sa mga types na minerals and rocks like muscovite, biotite, and volcanic rocks. And of course, ang very common na ginagamit ng mga geologists is the uranium. So, isotope niya, uranium-238 at saka uranium-235. The first one that I have mentioned is present sa zircon. It's a kind of mineral. And of course, uranium-235 is presence, ayan, pwede natin ma-detect sa uranine. And dito sa middle column, makikita ninyo yung half-life or ng years. That will tell us, or the geologists, that will give them a clue kung para ma-compute yung specific uh, age ng fossil or ng rock sample na na excavate nila or natagpuan nila na particular locations. Iba-iba kasi. So, depende sa location na na, na, na kuha nila yung particular sample. To give you another uh, comparison, so relative dating versus absolute dating. Pag sinabi natin relative, as we have mentioned, qualitative siya, descriptive siya. Compared sa absolute na quantity, so we're talking about numbers. Sa relative dating, ang pinaka basis natin is yung stratigraphic laws. So stratigraphic methods are used. For absolute, we use the radiometric techniques. Another would be relative dating is the relative age lang. Sa absolute, it will give you the exact age. Relative dating is also less specific compared sa absolute dating. And finally, relative dating, cheaper at time efficient yan. Okay, pero uh, pag sinabi ko sa natin relative dating, more of the parang ano lang to eh, more of masyadong general, no? Yung pagkakaspecify natin ng age. Pero for absolute, uh, although it's expensive and time-consuming, it will take uh, years, no, even years pa nga. Kasi pag tatahiin niya ng mga geologists and yung mga samples kung saan natagpuan, ayan. So it will take time, pero that will tell us the exact age of the particular fossil or rock sample na nakita nila. So I hope na na itindihan yung difference ng relative tsaka na absolute dating. So relative, Younger ba siya or older compared sa rock layers or rock samples? Pag absolute, exact age ang tinutukoy ng mga geologists. Let's try to answer these questions. I have two questions now. 
Ayan. So, time na pala. <laughs> Which type of dating method can be used on rock layers by applying the law of superposition? Sige, habang ina- binabasa niyo yan, shout out lang tayo na mabilis. Lyra Rhapsody Salvador, Kennedy Santos, Rosemary Aquino Reyes. Thank you for watching. Stacy Valerie Miranda. Ayan, watching via YouTube. And Sir Joselito Aranya from Nueva Ecija. All right. Thank you. The answer is, of course, relative dating. So we're using the stratigraphic laws. And this one, number two, I forgot to write number two. Which of the following is not true about absolute dating? And absolute dating. Ano hindi totoo about absolute dating? Sige nga. Of course, it would be letter B. It uses simple principles to recognize relative ages of rocks. So simple lang technique. Compared sa absolute dating na very particular, very quantitative ang approach, di ba, for absolute dating. Ayan, so that ends our session, no? So before we end our session, uh, hindi makakompleto ang session natin without our segment called the hashtag be inspired and hashtag be blessed. And I chose to share with you a quotation from Lao, Lao Tzu or Lao Tzu, one of my favorite philosophers. Ang sabi niya, life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Parang sa earth, di ba, nang babago, yung mga rocks. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. So the more na nare-resist natin, mas the more na nai-stress tayo, di ba? So kapag may mga changes na dumadaan sa buhay. So ang paloy-payo niya, let reality be reality. Let's accept reality. Let things flow naturally. So we go with the flow. Ayan. Forward, uh, let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. So go with the flow. Be positive lang sa ating mga uh, mindset. Ang lagi mong sinasabi sa mga students ko, positive mindset. So we are all challenged but this pan- but by this pandemic, but we can all go through this all together. Diba? Ayan, so Lao Tzu or Lao Tzu. Thank you so much for watching our Earth and Life Science Week 5 uh, session, you can contact me via email, Facebook, and my YouTube channel. So I hope to see you next session. Week 6 na tayo, alright? And next ating session is Shooter Cat for Media and Information Literacy. Once again, this is Shooter Tony. Happy Monday sa lahat. Keep safe. God bless. Bye-bye po. Ingat. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating e Life free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating e Life tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!